Well said, Timmy Dakolo, we are all we have. Nigeria is ours and we got to fix it. Mm. And talking about fixing our country, during the week, the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics released um, a report that Nigeria's inflation rate had risen to 17.33% from 16.47% recorded in January. And this is the highest point since April 2017. So what is responsible for this? And what has happened to the purchasing power of Nigerians? And how does this tie with the escape from recession? All of these questions, we're going to ask a panel of experts we have with us this morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Odilim Nguyagbara, who is a development economist. He joins us from our studio in Abuja. Good morning, Odilim. Uh -uh. And uh, the other two guests join us virtually. We have Johnson Chuku, who is an economist and the managing director of Kauri Asset Management. Morning. Good morning, Sister Leo. As well as Adegoke Omotola, also an economist. Well, we all we have all economists this morning. So prepare yourselves for a lesson in economy. Um, so these figures from the NBS. Um, let me start with uh, Mr. Nwebara. What does it mean to the man on the street in real terms? Okay, inflation is now at 17.33%. What does that mean? Thank you so very much. But uh, allow me a second to say something that is important here. Uh, when you said you have taken your COVID jam, I want us to appreciate that's what is called delayed side effect. I'm not saying that so that people will not take the jam, but I'm just trying to let you know, delayed side effect can be 12 months, it can be 36 months. So having said that, let's go to the issue. Now, uh, you already know that uh, I'm even surprised that the, the rate is at uh, below 20%. I was expecting by now something above 20%. But be it as it may, I think uh, MFLA has done a good job in uh, areas of uh, monetary policy to cushion on the bad fiscal policy we have been having in the country. So uh, regarding the, 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 the poor man or the average Nigerian, what we have seen is that their purchasing powers are increasingly decreasing because their incomes are not growing uh, equal to the uh, growth in, uh, in the inflation. So it's poverty that uh, we increase and also insecurity as people have already mentioned. And of course, the economy will not grow because if people do not consume, producers will not produce. And if producers do not produce, uh, taxes are not paid. As a result, uh, all the boomerang effects on the economy are only bit imagined. You know, Nigeria is a funny economy. A funny economy in the sense that uh, it's an economy, centralized economy, where all major decisions are made at the center and the little or nothing made at the peripheries or at the state levels. So you can understand those at the center who may not actually understand the mechanics of economic development and the small business uh, uh, empowerment uh, in order to create jobs, are those running the economy. And you should not expect something different. I know we have talked about this problem time with that number, and I continue to ask, why should Nigeria economy grow? That's the question we should be asking. Why shouldn't Nigeria have high inflection? Although I'm not against high inflection to some extent. You see, in an economy that is transiting from agrarian to industrial, you should expect high inflection. That's what happened in most economies that did that, like China, like uh, South Korea, like even India uh, as well. And even the, the, the today so-called uh, 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 advanced economies. 
to some extent, that is needed. But when that is happening without actually the economy growing, without job being created, then you must be worried. So to end my, my, my argument, I think at the end of the day, we all grow, we all becoming poorer and poorer. And the few that are rich actually do not have much effect on the economy because they do not consume. 90% of their consumption is imported. And if not 90% of their, of their consumption, not only imported, but they, they spend their money overseas. Most of them fly out of the country and fly in to do one or two things and fly out. Their children, their, 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 their children and their spouses are overseas. So but at the end of the day, we have to make that final decision. Do we need to continue to centralize the economic system or do we need to allow regions to emerge? You see, the only person I knew that has tried for this country, or the two people that I know that, are, that have leadership uh, uh, abilities, were Awolo. Okay, Awolo just, Awolo just one moment. Who was allowed to govern this country. If, if you don't mind me asking, uh, just to quickly clarify something you said earlier. When you said Nigeria, that an economy that is transiting from agrarian to industrial, are you saying that our policies indicate that we are transiting from an agrarian economy into an industrial economy? It's a question you ask, but you see, what I was trying to say that economies that transit from agrarian to industrial. So I, made, I, give, a, I give an example with China, South Korea, Brazil, and even... Uh, I just wanted to be clear. When, when, you made, when you made that you know, example, I'm just wondering if Nigeria's economy... Is one of them. Is one of those economies that is transiting, transiting. from agrarian to industrial. Oh, because for Nigeria economy to transit from in, uh, agrarian to industrial, it must be living commodity uh, space. Nigeria is fully filled up with the commodity space. Are so we Nigeria transiting... Unfortunately, look, let me, let me tell you this. About 20 years ago, the population of this country was about uh, 120, 130, 120, 130. Today, Nigeria is 200 million. The same amount of oil, if not less, Nigeria produced 20 years ago, Nigeria is producing today. And the prices are not actually growing. What do you expect? A large number of our youths are actually unemployed. And there's no effort, there's no systematic economic planned effort to bring these people out of, out of uh, unemployment. And that's why right, Nigeria is the, is the world capital of uh, uh, poverty and the okay. world capital of unemployment. All right, Mr. Wigwara, just, just one moment. Of, uh, yes, just one moment. Let, let's bring in um, your other colleagues on this panel. Mr. Motala, I don't know what your first take is on you know, all that is happening now. Uh, are we confused as an economy? Because uh, over the years, indeed, I mean, if I'm to borrow from what Mr. Anwe were at, one of the things, senses that he's trying to communicate to us is that we'll be making efforts to um, prioritize agriculture, at least as far back as I can remember, since 1977-78, when the Obasanjo government attempted the operation of Feed the Nation at the time, uh, which became Green Revolution and on and on and on like that. So... Um, what exactly do you think, do you see the problem to be? It was an opportunity to come back and share our thoughts. I, I was on this platform uh, May 2020. We were talking about Nigeria after COVID. And one of the uh, projections that we made then was that um, there's going to be like, it's likely to be uh, the, the rate of unemployment is likely to be about 35%. And from the uh, recent uh, results re released by uh, the Bureau of Statistics, um, is 33.3 percent. You know, <laughs> the rate of unemployment. Now, what is happening is that uh, there's so many issues on ground. The state of insecurity. I mean, if I'm going to address what the gentleman has talked about, the agricultural sector. I mean, the people can no longer access the farms as you know they would have been able to. Uh, before now, because of the state of insecurity. And also, you, are, you have a situation where um, uh, the level of, uh, you know, inflows from a, from a diaspora is, is, is almost, um, you know, it's not what it was compared to uh, before COVID. Uh, so um, now in, in the domestic environment, um, as at last month, 
the rate of um, inflation was, uh, I think it was about 16 point, you know, four uh, percent. Now it's about 17.33 percent. So the government has its hands filled with so many things. Um, we just have to, we just have to recalibrate because we can't keep on coming on this platform saying the same things. And I, I, I trust that the government is also listening. Um, there must also be the willingness to implement certain things. Obviously, COVID uh, disrupted um, uh, the, the, the narrative. But if you look at the American economy, I mean, there's a fiscal stimulus now of $1.9 uh, trillion, you know, that has been pumped in the economy just to do something which I can call a shock therapy, you know. And I think, um, you know, we, we need to just do a recalibration. We need to do it and real quick because when you have the rate of unemployment and the rate of 33 percent um you can only you know you can only predict that you know the, there will be a lot of uh, unrest I mean, even amongst the youths when they're idle um you know they're up to uh, a lot of uh, mischief so that's my take for now yes okay thank you uh, um, jo johnson uh, let me let me just take you back a little bit um we need to look at the reasons for this high rate of inflation. What to your mind has contributed the most to this inflation, which we're seeing in Nigeria today? Thank you. Um, my take is that uh, if you want to understand the reason why inflation is at 17.33%, uh, you, you need to disaggregate that inflation figure. And to disaggregate, we have to look at what, what, is, what was food inflation in February and what was core inflation in February. If you look at the inflation figure, the food inflation was 21.79% in February. That's the highest we've had in the past six years. And, but if you look at the core inflation, the core inflation was only 12.38%. And I need to explain that. What is basically driving inflation is the fact that food prices have jumping up in the past couple of months. And it didn't just start in February. If you look at the food inflation in January, it was 20.56%, an increase of 1.01% from the December figure of 19.56%. So what is driving inflation today in the country is the price of food items, basic food items. And those food items include uh, grains, cereals, tubers like potato, yam, meat, fish, and processed food items. And why are we talking of food items that are produced locally that are driving inflation? Because we've seen a displacement of farmers across the country. If you look at uh, the virtual all the sectors of the economy, all the, I mean, all the, all the regions of the country, look at it, it all started in the Northeast, where Boko Haram displaced farmers, and now it has moved to the Northwest, and we're dealing with headers, uh, farmers issues in the North Central, and gradually it's coming down to the Southern part of the country. So the basic thing is that those food items that Nigeria normally produce uh, are not being produced at the same level that we are produced because we are having displacement of farmers across the country. So the major thing is this security situation in the country. And that's the core of the problem because the current inflation figure of 17.33%, uh, which is only second, I mean, if you look at the highest rate we've seen in the past six years, it was January 2017 when we had 18.72%. Uh, but today we are gradually moving towards that, that 17.33%, driven solely by food inflation. Because, like I said, core inflation, which is if you take out the volatile food items, the other uh, consumption uh, expenditure, their price only moved from 11.85% in January to 12.38%. So we cannot situate the problem. The problem is we have the split of farmers, and therefore they're not able to produce enough food. And because they can't produce enough food, we are seeing the price of volatile food items moving up very fast and driving up the all item infl inflation figure. Uh, it, it's curious uh, that you put it that way, Mr. Chiku, but um, and you may want to respond to it as well later. But let me go to Mr. Weguara. Um, he has pointed to prices of food items as core reason for this inflation. And um, of course, it's the, the report is, is the CPI report, the Consumer Price Index report. Now, what is curious for me in all of this is that according to that same report, the highest inflation growth is recorded in Kogi, 
Bochi, and Ebony states. And the lowest inflation uh, figures came from Enugu, Cross River, and Kwara states. Kogi and Kwara states are neighbors. So what is it that so, uh, and so I'm just wondering um, how that came to be. Kogi is in the north uh, central, um, Bochi is in the northeast, Ebony is in the southeast. So it would seem like, um, I don't know, what do you make of this analysis? What do you make of this, uh, th this report, you know, pointing out these, uh, you know, core issues when, and if we say it's the price index, I, I'm, I'm a little confused. Can you throw some light? <clears throat> Based on what you have said, and uh, Mr. Chuku just said, you already know the answer. Whatever I will say, just additional. You know, when you look at Kogi and the Enugu, and the Enugu for example, Kogi and the Enugu have boundary. As soon as you are moving from Enugu to Kogi, you start witnessing insecurity, whether you like it or not. And then the next is Benue. I didn't know why Benue is not added. The indication is, uh, as a result of insecurity, you could witness social unrest. As a result of insecurity, you should witness price a spike, especially in relation to food items. Because as uh, uh, Shugu said, and I agree with him, is that actually Nigeria is uh, an economy dependent on food. Everything is built around food. Nigeria is not an industrial economy, let alone, let alone uh, a service economy, like US a service economy and China industrial economy. So what you have seen is because of security dynamics, you could witness that people are not out there to move in, good, to move in uh, 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 food items. And because they could not move food items, especially perishable food items that need to be moved as quickly as possible, then prices will, 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 will increase. And when those prices increase, they affect the inflation, the overall inflation of those state economies. So that's what I will say. But you know, I still believe that be it as it may that we are discussing these issues, one thing we must have at the back of our minds is that Nigerian economy needs to be restructured. Nigeria must be an industrial economy. Look at phytomedicine, for example. Today, phytomedicine is about 1.5 trillion and is going to double in the next five years. It is an area China and India and the US are investing a lot, and Nigeria is not doing anything. Yes, Mr. MFLA came up with a, a, a help to those who want to invest in this area. But the MFLA cannot do it alone. The enabling environment is not there. For example, I've gone into phytomedicine, and I will tell you I'm chipping a lot to the United States. And as a result, because I'm chipping a lot to the United States at a high cost because of DHL, I am moving my, fact, my, 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 my phytomedicine business to the United States because it, that's where it makes sense to me. These are the type of things government has to do. Government cannot just sit down and just be drinking their, their, their gogoro or whatever they drink and eating their suya and think that things will change. There must be a, an effort by government to help small businesses. There must be an effort by government to ensure that imported goods that could be made locally are not imported. So that you should not import uh, 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 poverty and inflection. Because most of the things we have in this country, besides food, are actually imported inflection when they are manufactured goods. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Matala, um, we are in a dire situation, aren't we? Minimum wage is 30,000 Naira. Um, and it doesn't look like it's going to go up from 30,000 Naira anytime soon. Um, a lot of people are daily paid workers, small time traders who make money from day to day. They go to this same market to buy their food. They will transport themselves to wherever they're going. There's also the issue of um, the cost of petrol, which right now is something that we can't really relax about because there's talk about there's going to be an increase in that price very, very soon. So how does the poor man survive in an economy like this, earning 30,000 Naira a month? Some even earn less. Some people are paid as little as 20,000 Naira a month. They have to get to work. 
they have to eat, they have to pay rent. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough situation because when you look at before COVID, you know, the 30,000 naira uh, could, uh, could um, get you much more than what it is getting you today. Even when you look at the rate of the dollar uh, that we have and the rates, the exchange, foreign exchange rate. Um, so, like you also mentioned, uh, thank thank God that the government had to, uh, you know, put a stop to the uh, increase in the price of petrol. It would have led to even more uh, more challenges for the average man on the street. Uh, so we it still goes back to the issue of uh, insecurity. Um, the average man on the street who earns thirty thousand naira is having to spend more 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 money on most of his income on buying food. And now that the, the price of uh, food has, uh, has gone up, you know, uh, you can imagine it. You know, the average man on the street is uh, even getting to work for some, some people is, is a major challenge right now. So if the issue of insecurity can be addressed, uh, it, would, it would create, uh, you know, a win-win for even the government. And so the government has to nip the challenges in the northeast, the, you know, moving down to even the down to the south, they have to nip it in the bud as soon as possible. Mm. That's my take. Well, mm. uh, but uh, uh, okay. it has blossomed. Forget the bud. <laughs> well, 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 Mr. Botella, we'll, we'll come back to that conversation. You know, when we return from this break, please stay with us. Well, Mr. Botella, you know. Already, um, Alara has told you that it's no longer something to be nipped in the bud because it has already blossomed. Now, the challenge is, <laughs> the challenge is reversing the trend. And, um, yeah. you know, most of the time we talk about, we talk from the macro level, but then yes. um, much of the effects is on the micro level. Mm. What's the nexus? Well, um... You know, when we look at the domestic environment, I mean, we've had these uh, challenges for, for, you know, for months. I think it's, it's in terms of uh, strategy, even for the government. Uh, we have to be able to think ahead. You know, when we, you know, the, when the government closed the land borders, it caused a spike uh, in the price of, you know, uh, uh, commodities in Nigeria. Uh, obviously, government had to do a rethink and, uh, you know, it helped to, to calm things down. But um, when you look at the domestic environment now, um, obviously the CBN has, you know, uh, a role to play uh, in terms of, um, you know, trying to, they have a lot of incentives for SMEs, but there must be more done in that, in that sector because a lot of uh, small businesses, uh, they need soft loans, they need small, you know, they need loans to survive. Some of them are almost on life support, you know. And so um, there must be, you know, because there needs to be more of wealth creation, um, long term, you know. And that's why when I talked about the American uh, fiscal stim stimulus, 1.9 trillion, what it's going to do for a lot of small businesses, you know, is that it will bring them back to life. If we can have that kind of incentive uh, in Nigeria, um, governments. For example, the refinery, $1.5 billion uh, for Portaco refinery in the next 18 months, I mean, to do a revamp. I would have expected that, you know, even if it's uh, half of that, that is put into the domestic uh, you know, environment, maybe about $750 million, you know, to, to jumpstart, you know, uh, the, the, the small businesses, these, you know, uh, and also to create that momentum. Because as it is now, uh, most small businesses are almost becoming uh, going out of business, so they need they need support immediately, so that when they do that, um, the they they're able to create employment, you know, and uh, for for even the teaming youths, and that's why you see that all over the place now there's there's the insecurity is spiking, you know, the youth the youths are you know they're restless, they're, they're about to engage in mischief, and so the government needs to to address that, you know. Uh, in fiscal and monetary policy, but mostly in terms of uh, creating employment for the youth. Um, I trust that we won't have to come back here in the next uh, one year still talking about this. There needs to be, like the gentleman in Abuja is saying, a recalibration, to recalibrate, 
very quickly. Thank you. My challenge is, is not with um, whether or not this recalibration is, uh, is possible. My challenge is how does it get to the people? You spoke about the interventions. Let's, let, let me take this to uh, Mr. Chiku. Um, he, you heard him. He spoke about you know, government intervention, that government needs to come to the rescue of the SMEs, the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Yes, um, for years... The Central Bank of Nigeria has announced a good number of uh, intervention projects, 20 billion Naira MSME funds, 220 billion Naira MSME funds. Which people couldn't access. Which, anywhere. that actually is my, is the issue right here. So the funds are all there, at least have been announced. The processes have been displayed by government. There's a survival fund from the, you know, it being affected from the office of the of vice president. There is the um, um, uh, economic sustainability plan with its own integral, uh, with an integral part of it being about MSMEs, as a vice president would say, putting money into the hands of Nigerians. It's the access to those funds for the micro, small, and medium enterprises. That is the challenge, wouldn't you say? How do we reverse that trend, or at least what needs to be done? OK, thank you, Aya. Um, let me put it this way. Um, providing funding to businesses is one of the multiple needs of businesses. They have some other fundamental challenges that you need to do, what, you need do, what I call the heavy lifting that are not being done. Uh, you see, if you look at setting up a business, running a business successfully, how why businesses thrive, why businesses fail, you have to look at what are those things that businesses need to grow. One of which is funding at relatively uh, cheap cost and uh, longer tenure. That's one aspect. The other factor that are impeding, or what you call limiting factor to success of businesses in the country. And we need to address that to improve productivity. The key challenge we have today with inflation is not just the fact that uh, we are, it's because we are not producing enough. And you can only bring that inflation when you start producing enough. We have talked about the constraint that leading to high food inflation uh, that came at 21.79%. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Chuku. I get increasingly confused and, for want of a better word, impatient. When I hear stuff like we're not producing enough, first of all, Nigeria is not going to produce without Nigerians. Okay, so let that be um, made clear. So when we say we are not producing enough, um, I, I, I'd like you to decrypt that so that we can have a better understanding and we can now know how to okay. begin to take, even if, even if there are baby steps towards reversing okay. the trend. Because if we indeed, I mean, okay. you are not the first person to say it, if we are not producing as a people, we will be consuming. And that this, that's where the problem is. OK, let me, tell, let me bring inflation uh, definition to the layman's level. Inflation is when the quantity of money is pursuing a smaller quantity of goods and services. So the price of those goods and services will have to increase because the quantity of money pursuing them is higher than the quantity of goods and services. When the quantity of goods and services increases more than the increase in the quantity of money, then the price of goods come down because you have more in the market and then the buyers will re 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 reassert their consumer power and then we begin to negotiate prices. So prices will come down. So that basic thing when we say that we're not producing enough because you are not, what we have seen is that with quantity of food items produced in the country and available to Nigerians to consume is lower than the demand of Nigerians. And that is why basic food items like tomato, uh, tomato and stuff like that are going up because the quantity coming into the uh, economy for consumption is less than, less than the quantity of what people are doing, consuming as their population is increasing. So that's the basic thing. But let's go to the core of your question. The challenge we have today is not just because people are not having access to funding. It's one of the things we need to address. But the, we need to do the, what I call the heavy lifting, which is, we need to provide a supporting infrastructure. And I, will, I can tell us here that look, you need funding, you need access to land, you need a good policy environment, you need access to power, and that power must be cost effective. You need access to evacuation infrastructure, that is road transport infrastructure. For those who are bringing in their raw materials, they need access to an efficient port system 
I'll give you an instance. Some, I brought in a vehicle for use in December last year. The vehicle came out two weeks ago. The vessel that brought the vehicle came into the country in December, but he couldn't be get betting uh, space. So he had been there carrying the, bearing the mileage for three months. And if, as I was bringing in input materials for productive activities, what that would have mean, my factory would have been shut down and I wouldn't have been able to produce the quantity of goods that would have produced for that three months. And then wouldn't be able to bring them to the market. And because I'm not able to bring them to the market, the quantity of those goods I produce will be less than what the market demands. And the price of those goods will go up. So we need to address the issue of infrastructure supply. If we don't address the infrastructure supply, no matter the amount of money you give to SMEs, they will not survive. I'll give an instance. You give loan to a small and medium scale entrepreneur. You give him, let's say you give 500,000 Naira. For him to run his operation on a daily basis, he has to buy a generator. That generator may cost more than 500,000 Naira. When he does that, and run that generator consistently 24 hours every day for three months, the generator will break down. He needs to buy diesel, which is trading at more than 200 Naira today, almost 250 Naira today. He needs to buy diesel to fuel that generator. A competitor in China will not need a generator. So if you give the guy in Nigeria 500,000, give the guy in China the same amount of money. The guy in China will do pl uh, plug and play. He will just set up his factory and connect to the national grid. And power comes to him at the cheap cost. When he produces and he needs to take it to a major urban area, there are rail lines, uh, fast speed rail lines that will take it to that place within a matter of minutes. The Nigerian, if he's producing a canoe, will come take him three, uh, one week to get to Lagos. Even if you have to take a pro, uh, your raw materials from a proper port to Sudan, it will take you two weeks or three weeks to move your uh, raw material from a proper seaport. After you have taken three months to clear it, to bring it to Sudan, to move your factories in Sudan. So these are some of the cost training factors that even that are making it. Even as you give more money to small and medium sector, even as central bank intervention, development finance initiatives are going into the manufacturing sector, the manufacturing sector is not growing because other constraining factors are making it impossible for us to produce effectively and efficiently and at reasonable cost. And those costs are part of what is driving down inflation because if I have to pay for uh, fuel, if I have to pay for the repair of my generator, I have to pay for the depreciation of the, uh, the generator, which I have to amortize over a period of time. I will add those things to my cost of production. And I have to sell at the price that covers my cost of production. And as long as I want to sell at that, if you open the borders, the guy who produces China will come and land in Nigeria at maybe half of the price of my cost of production and we have to compete me. So if we don't address the infrastructural deficit in the economy, we are not going to bring inflation and we're not going to create employment. We're not going to be a productive economy. So even if you give money to the manufacturing sectors and they have to still contain with all these issues, plus the bottlenecks and the toll gates that are put there by government officials, where you have to pay several taxes, where you have to be, uh, uh, you have to settle a lot of government agencies to get your permits. So these are some of the challenges they have. And that's why it is not enough that we throw more money at them. We need to address those problems so that they can produce effectively and efficiently. Um, each time each of you speaks, I see uh, it's as if you're digging our hole and putting us in, and we're just going deeper and deeper into the hole. And closing the, the, the soil at the same time. Uh, uh, well, um, the nature of live television. We must start looking now at, okay, so all this is happening to us. Food prices are going up, unemployment is high, insecurity is high, blah, 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 blah. So how can we begin to get ourselves out of this situation? Odilim, let me begin think, with you. Uh, thank you. I, I'm very happy that uh, uh, Mr. Chuku said something about throwing money at uh, small businesses. I happen to be a small business owner. And I will completely disagree with Mr. Chuku because I'm now in the business. I'm not talking as a scholar or as an analyst, but as a, somebody involved in this business. Look, it all boils down to money. I will tell you that I receive a lot of calls from the US, from China, from even Nigeria, supply this. Recently, somebody came to me and said, I need 100,000 pieces of uh, uh, one of your phytomedicines. I said, do you know what 1,000 means? It takes me one year to produce it because I don't, have the, I don't have the funding to set up the machinery I need and things like that. So I completely disagree. I think what happened is that CBN has good intention, but politicians have hijacked the whole thing. Politicians have set up companies to assess the fund and just keep the fund uh, for personal use, uses. 
Pay uh, 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 NABDAC, for example. Ju just one if moment, you Mr. Wilbur. Mr. Wilbur, ju just, just one moment. Um, let's, let's just clear something. What exactly is it that you do not disagree with, Mr. Chuku said? Let me, let me make something clear. He said, yes, if yes, the yes. infrastructural deficit or is, is bridged, if the, infra in the gap of uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructural deficit is bridged, the cost of production will reduce for the micro, small, and medium enterprise owner, like yourself, just as you're saying. But, but he, so but if you spend no, less no, to you produce, know it be would you still have the same challenge? That's what he's talking about. No, 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 no. Let me tell you. Okay. It cannot be bridged. The only way we can bridge it is get, set up industrial, industrial parks. I can address, and I've been addressing the issue of infrastructure in my small business. There's no way you get to that point because the state or the federal government cannot do that. I have suggested the need for industrial parks. I have suggested for regionalization of the economy so that regions can set up their industrial parks and things like that. So what he said is not practically possible. The only thing that is possible, as I said, is that it throw money to at those people who need it. I need the money. And nobody is giving me the money. If you give me the money, I will, I will solve most of those problems and add them into my cost. And I will still make profit because I'm in this business. But you see, when we talk without being in the business, it, yes, it, just, seems, it seems easy. Just one moment, Mr. Weber. Let, let's let's Mr. Mr. Chukwu quickly assessed. respond to that. CBM just one moment. has been assessed by... Just one moment, Mr. Mugwara. Let Mr. Chuku quickly respond to this thing that you have just said now so we can have an exit. Maybe there was, there was a misunderstanding. Mr. Chuku, go ahead. In the economic space, it's a competitive milieu. Today, we have adopted African Continental Free Trade Agreement, signed it. People will go to Ghana and produce at a cheaper cost and then sell to Nigerians. The key thing I said is that it is not just enough to give them money. You need to address the other constraining factors. But not let me say just give them money. And if that is the case, why are the SMEs failing? Why is the manufacturing industry failing? The government has given you, uh, you mentioned multiples of intervention funds that the government central bank has given to the manufacturing sector, several sectors of the economy, but they are still failing. Why is it that we are trying to activate the textile industry? It has failed. Because you do not, for you to run the textile industry, you need very effective and cost efficient power supply. And we don't have it. So if you give money to the textile factories, they will not work because those money they will use to buy generator, generator will break down and the cost of running the generators are exorbitant. You remember that whatever you are producing here, there's nothing we're producing here where nobody's producing this way in the world. And those people are producing at the cost far cheaper than ours. It's not just enough to give manufacturers money. And for the list uh, information, I run factories. I have businesses running. And I can tell you, my office in Lagos has two generators. My office in the village has two generators. My office in Abuja has two generators. But I can have two generators. Elsewhere, if I mean, I was. The, 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 your issue is not with giving money to the SMEs. The issue is mo giving money alone to them will not solve the problem. But give them money, but address the infrastructure challenge. That's your position. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. If you don't have the infrastructure yes. challenges, you can. Yes. Let, let's go back to Mr. Wigwara. Mr. Wigwara, please go ahead. Yes. Yes. You see, Mr. Mr. Chuku has forgotten. We have been talking this, Mr. Chuku and I, I think we have met three or four times on uh, channels. Let me tell you the truth of them. The truth of the matter is this. When China started in 1989, exactly when it started industrializing, China did not build infrastructure. You see, infrastructure follows the money. What Nigeria should do is to make it difficult for finished goods from overseas to come into the country. And the, that must be done. Whether we like it or not, WTO, whether WTO will be against us or not, that must be done. When you do that, infrastructure problem will be addressed by those people who actually need to supply. Look, if you, if we, in Abuja now, Abuja state, Abuja government sees that about 20 companies are running generator in different parts. And Abuja said, you know what? We bring them together in a, in a park and they set up a, 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 a generating plant for them, and then make, that is what is going to happen. But you Mr. 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 That if we, we address we infrastructure, if yes. you address infrastructure, the economy yeah. will grow. No, issue is if you don't give people enough money, they cannot get raw materials. Okay, all right. Let, let's leave it there. Uh, Mr. Omotola, you want to quickly, you know, drop your thoughts, your concluding thoughts, so we can close this shortly. 
Wow, it's been very <laughs> engaging for us. Um, I, I just like to say that um, going forward, um, the area of insecurity, like I mentioned, if the government can address the area of insecurity, then also the uh, issue of uh, ease of doing business. I know the vice president uh, spearheaded, you know, the that uh, that sector, trying to make sure that uh, it's much more easier for small businesses uh, to. Uh, you know, to get things done. I mean, the ports, um, different, you know, agencies. Um, I think they, there needs to be a political will, you know, to uh, to push that agenda even for, like I said, recalibration. Um, while we're doing, you know, addressing insecurity, then like Mr. Chuku said, uh, ease of doing business. We need to, we need to just, because I mean, when you are trying to run your business on generator, you know, multiple taxis and so on and so forth. Um, it will not create the environment for uh, employment. I mean, th those business will not be able to uh, take on more people. So, but if the infrastructure is, I mean, like electricity, I mean, the cost of transportation reduces and so on and so forth. Um, Mr. Mokala, sorry, we've run out of time completely. We've run out of time completely. And unfortunately, we cannot take any tweets. All we do have time for is for me to thank the, 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 the panelists, uh, Mr. Johnson Chuku, an economist, uh, Mr. Odilim Nwagbara, a development economist, and Mr. Adegu Keomotola, also an economist, for being on our panel this morning to talk to us about inflation and how well, we didn't quite get round to what should be done for us to get out of it, but this conversation has only just started. It is not the end of it. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Sunrise will return in just a moment with another interesting conversation.